Dan Williams, we're back at Survive Outdoors. If you're new to the channel, I am a physician assistant of 40 plus years. We do wilderness medicine, gear reviews, tons of cool stuff. If you like that, subscribe. And we do monthly giveaways. So you have to subscribe to get into the monthly giveaway. So if, even if you don't like wilderness medicine, you might get a chance to win something, huh? Today we're doing binoculars. And there's a lot of people that really don't know what those numbers mean. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about what would be a good pair of binoculars for you. It really depends on what you want them for. And we're going to talk about prices and a few other little tips and tricks on binoculars. So what I have around my neck are these are Leopold 8x42s. And they're waterproof. So what do those numbers mean? The first number on binoculars is the amount of mag magnification. So that's eight times. Whatever you're looking at is going to be eight times larger. And the second number, the 42 on there, is the measured in millimeters of this is the objective lens. So that is what that is, measured in millimeters. Now, the higher that number is, the obviously the larger this glass is going to be. And what's going to happen is those are going to be heavier. It's also going to let more light in. These are Leopold 10 by 50s. And you can see the size difference. Now, these stay in my vehicle. And these are used for when I scan deer way out in the field or when I'm out in Montana or Wyoming. These are excellent for that situation. However, when you go up higher in magnification, around the 10 range, it's going to be harder to hold this still. Now, I inherited from my dad something called an intention familial tremor, where I shake just a tad, screws up my photography terribly. So I have to prop these on the window. A lot of people, when they get to 10 by 50 and larger, will use a tripod or a monopod. So keep that in mind. Now, what I like about these also is these caps, as you can see, they come out. And what is that for? That is if you wear glasses or you don't wear glasses. So a lot of people will get binoculars, they'll stick them to their face, and they'll put them up and they'll look through them, and they'll see a ring and it's really hard, or the two rings start to do this number, and it gets very, oh, I don't like these. Well, what this does is it helps tremendously omit that ring around the object you're looking at. So that's really a nice little uh, advantage. And looking back, I want to look at that if you are a person that wears corrective lenses all the time. If you're wearing contacts, not a big deal. So then over here, we have the Vortex brand Diamondback. And these are 8 by 28s And these are waterproof also. And these are really smaller than the smaller... Leopolds or Leopolds, okay? And these are these are made in China. Leopolds are come out of Beaverton, Oregon. However, some of their material they make it in Japan. I'm just giving it as up. And I know some of my subscribers want a totally USA made binocular. So prices. What are we looking at on prices on these? So on prices, this is under two hundred dollars. Back in the day, I got these for under 300. Now they're probably about 300 or 310. When I was starting out in my early 20s, I didn't have money. I bought cheap binoculars, and then I had to buy another pair. And then I had bought a pair, and they fogged up, and the glass was terrible in them, and they developed mold. So it was really, if I knew what I knew back then, I would have got one cheap pair, and then I would have waited and saved up you can get a really good pair of binoculars for under $300. Between one and three, that would be my advice. Now, Cornell Labs did a really awesome study, and they showed that anything at $500 and above leveled off the playing field, and it really didn't get that much better. You know, you can get a pair of Zeiss binoculars for about $3,000, but when compared to a $500 brand, it really wasn't that big of a deal. Now, one of the things I wanted to talk to you about is also is, this is a cheap pair of Nikon. It's a Nikon. Oh my gosh, it's got to be good, right? 
No, this is 8x21. I got these for 25 bucks at a camera shop. I would not even put these in a free giveaway. All right? They're horrendous. What, what, I'm going to talk about exit pupil. What does that mean? So exit pupil, this is really an important one. Exit pupil is the calculation of, you take the objective lens number, the 50, and you divide it by the magnification, which is on this one 10. And what do you get? Five, all right? That's simple. So 5.0, that is the number that's going to tell you how clear the object you're looking at. In other words, you're going to be able to see that object better in low light, dawn and dusk, for sure. So the higher the number, the better those pair of binoculars are at low light. So this is a 5.0, and not bad, right? These, Leopold, that my wife scammed from me that uses for her birding and deer, these are 8x42. This is a 5.25. It's even better than the 10x50. So it really depends on what you're going to be doing. Are you going to be in a safari in Africa? Are you going to be out in Montana hunting elk? Then you're going to want a 10x50. Are you going to be out looking at waterfowl? You may want a something uh, with a higher exit pupil number, but you can go lower in the magnification. Field of view. What is field of view? Field of view is what you're seeing at a thousand yards. So usually about 325 feet at a thousand yards. Now the thing is, is that if you're using a 10 by 50, that's going to really cut down that field of view. So the larger the magnification, the shorter the field of view is going to be. It's going to be easier to spot something like a bird in a tree with a basically a larger field of view as opposed to a 10 by 50 trying to find a oriole up in the tree with this is going to be much more difficult so for birders a lot of birders aren't going with 10 by 50s then on the other hand birders that are into the predator birds and owls and hawks they will like this more so because they probably can't get that close so I have some friends of mine that, you know, they view looking at birds of prey and they like their 10 by 50s or even a little larger. All right. So that is the binoculars in a nutshell. We're looking at the size. What do the numbers mean? The exit pupil number is important. Do you need a pair of waterproof binoculars or not? Depends on what you're going to be doing. And what is your budget? Really important. If you're going to be using these for 10, 20, 30 years and you got the money, try to invest in something between $100 and $300. You can't go wrong. Vortex has really come along. They're a great band. I like loopholes. Um, you got plenty of money to spend. Go get Zeiss. I really haven't been shopping around for binoculars lately. I like what I have. Uh, they've lasted a long time, and so I'm really pleased with them. Tell me what binoculars you guys have. What's your favorite brand? And did I miss anything? Did I leave anything out? Let me know. Put it down below. So that's it, guys. Those are the binoculars. So in the next video, what are we going to be doing? We're going to be doing the giveaway. We're going to be doing some other cool stuff, I promise. All right. Keep your eyes on the rise and your face to the wind. I will see you next time.